Red Balloon Rock Talk. Welcome back, everybody. New week, new episode. We're excited to get going on this one. It's a rather interesting topic today. We were talking about doing um, uh, acoustic guitars and uh, obviously electric guitars in rock and roll. And we decided that we were going to choose bands that um, really exemplify the use of an acoustic guitar and bands that exemplify the use or I, better, I don't know how the best phrase is, but uses an electric guitar in such a way that it's unforgettable, that they are groundbreaking in some respects, um, just showing what an electric guitar really can do, its voice as you have used in the past. Um, and I think when you hear our picks today, you'll understand kind of where I'm going with all that. And uh, certainly you'll want to, Think of your yeah, own. and I, I just want to interject. Yeah, so I'm I'm kind of looking at it as, um, you know, a defining sound, a song of a band that really has a defining sound. And I want to kind of uh, add to that. I think it's easier to choose an an electric guitar sound because of the electronics and the pedals and things that it can go through. Uh, you can really, uh, you know, there were certain artists that really found a unique voice. Whereas with an acoustic guitar, I think it was less that it was an original sound as it was an original texture that... Well, it definitely changes the, the, the atmosphere of a song. Yeah, oh, no yeah, yeah. Um, Regardless of the fact if there's an, an, um, an electric bass in there, if they're using keyboards, just using an acoustic guitar and, and might i also add to that sometimes you'll hear an acoustic guitar along with an electric guitar side by side and i have no problem with that so i, I want to make sure everyone understands and especially you too that like this isn't me bashing acoustic guitars and going yeah man rock and roll is only about electric guitar. no i'm not <clears throat> saying that i think as we get into this discussion a tad bit you'll understand what we're talking about a little bit yeah. and see where we're heading with this um so with that being said, just a little bit, um, you know, let's just, we're going to start, I think, with our picks. We were supposed to do five, and we've definitely gone overboard again. Uh, we can't seem to hold our, hold back when it comes to writing down material. It just starts yep. to flow after you start thinking about it for a long time, and so narrowing it down becomes quite the challenge. Anyway, um, so let me clarify Start with acoustic, uh, right? Yeah, we're going to start with the acoustic tonight, and then let's do... Um, so, you know, there are two ways I think of listening to an acoustic version. One is through straight acoustic playing, just a mic, a true acoustic guitar, whether it be a folk or whatever. And then you also have the more up to date where you have uh, a pickup put onto a guitar. Um, in some cases, the guitar is custom built as an acoustic, but it is electric. Um, and I would still count that even if it's electric, and it has a, um, a pickup on it, I would still say that it's an acoustic guitar because it has the hollow body to it. And I'm not saying the Gibson hollow body is a, an acoustic guitar. I'm just saying that there are guitars professionally made yep. that are acoustic guitars that are able to plug in. Yep. Um, and a lot of that's also just because of stage presence. You need to be able to push the sound out versus just a microphone, yep. depending on the stage setup, wherever you are. So basically, um, when we're talking acoustic, it's it's an acoustic guitar either being uh, recorded through a microphone or through a pickup that's been added to the guitar or set up right. to have that pickup built into the guitar. And, and then electric say, is electric. This was... An, <laughs> And when I came up with the idea to do this uh, particular week's episode, I really didn't think it was going to be a hard thing to do. And then I sat down and started trying to write down things. And I was like, oh, my Lord, have mercy. This is a lot harder than I thought. So if you're out there in the zone and watching us and watching this episode, grab a pen and start thinking on your own. Uh, obviously, you might like some of our picks, and you can certainly count those on yours, but uh, definitely – 
this was a lot harder to <laughs> well and i think i think what made it a little bit challenging for me was really uh understanding the the parameters that we were trying to go for and once i once i had a sense of the parameters uh it became a lot easier uh and i th i think as you hear what i've chosen um you know it'll make sense it'll it'll fit the the parameters that we just kind of outlined right so and, and before, you uh do you want to start yeah just before we go into that though, a little bit um the electric guitar again i just want to make sure everyone understands that this is really when we're talking about our picks on this one it's really us thinking about how unique somebody this artist is pushing the envelope of this guitar it doesn't matter what version whether it's a fender strat to a gibson an ibanez whatever the artist is playing it doesn't <laughs> matter um, if they have managed to do something so incredible with the sound that they're producing with that guitar that it has overwhelmed our senses you know we've selected things that are very personal to us obviously and that's going to be the case in any of any of these topic areas that we're talking about. But yeah. anyway, we'll get into that get in into a minute. It. So uh, the first one I have going here is going to be, I think, a clutch one. And you already heard it from me, but it's going to be Pink Floyd's Wish You Were Here. And David Gilmore just makes the guitar sing every time he picks it up. Yeah, and that was one of mine. Yeah, I mean, sure. you don't have to be a huge Floyd fan, but to turn on Wish You Were Here... It's it's a, just a, a beautiful song, but yeah, it's got some really cool acoustic guitars, guitar work, and yep. you know, it it can be debated that David Gilmour is one of the best guitarists of all time. Um, there are certainly people out there who would who place him up there on that pedestal. Um, I, for one, am in the mindset that it, he could be in a very top elite. I'm not going to say he's number one per se, but definitely um, he is, he is right there. He's in, he's in the elite category. Yep. There is no way it is not going to happen that way. But um, yeah. So Pink Floyd's wish you were here. Okay. Why don't you do, uh, why don't you do four? Go ahead and do four. All right. <laughs> well, a couple of my picks, two of my band picks, I actually have two choices and I couldn't figure out which one to do. So I was just going to throw them out there to the wolves and, Namely you. Let, you. let it stick, you know what I'm saying? Let's see what Anyway, uh, Don, Don McLean's American Pie. What a classic, right? Okay. All acoustic. It's so simple. The lyrics, the, the, the guitar. I'm not saying that the bands I'm picking, like, these are the most important songs ever written, but the way the song, it, it couldn't be done with an electric guitar is what I'm trying to get at. Yep that the acoustic version should be the only version. Don't tamper with it. If you want to do a remake of the song, if you want to do something like that, fine, but do it the way it was written. And don't change the instrumentation on it. You're okay. laughing at it. Why are you laughing? It goes back to our covers uh, uh, video. Yeah, well. <laughs> it's not one that should be covered any differently. Well, I'm not saying it can't be covered. I'm just saying at this point, you know, if you're going to do it, keep it to the original because yep. it is done so well and it and it was written for the acoustic guitar. Yep. Okay. So this is this is a really obscure song. But if you listen to it, you know I moved every time I hear it. Every time I, and I seek it out every once in a while when I'm just in that mood where I got to just be soothed. And it is The Who, namely Pete Townsend and Roger Daltrey, um, doing it as a duet. But it's called Tea and Theater. Mm -hmm. Now, I know you're a big it's Who It's a fan. more obscure song, but yeah. I don't know if you really listen to that or not, but they don't play it a whole lot. But no. the versions that you can find online are definitely worthy of listening to. There is... There are a couple really, really great renditions of that song that they pull out that just, you know, I have to take a breath and I'm like, wow, that's just, Roger Daltrey, as old as he is, man, he still can hit it. And just, yep. He counts and just listen to the, just listen to how he is matured from the 60s until the 90s, you know, uh, and just, 
in all well, aspects and, of the and, plant. Yeah, and, and Pete Townsend had the background of uh, uh, banjo and, um, and uh, uh, skiffle, I think. Um, but he has, you know, his, his picking style on an acoustic, his playing style on the acoustic is has been solid you know from the earliest days yeah, yeah. Definitely. I, I i love the song and it's just a beautiful song and uh if you've never heard it definitely want to take a listen to that one and it might change your opinion on the what the who really is and how diversified they really are um so my number four here i'm going to give you two on this one and you understand why because they're really more of an acoustic band to start with but it's crosby stills and nash mm -hmm. And I have Teacher Children, iconic yep. song, just all about <clears throat> the moment and the time that it was written and also carry on. Both songs are, they're not played as heavily anymore in rotation, I think, in some of the radio stations and some of the serious XM stations that are out there. Um, but it is, it's, it's still out there and I think their music is so strong and it is, it is quintessential acoustic. Yep. I think they are a band that really didn't need electric. Although when Steven Stills solos on an electric guitar, you, everyone stands up and listens, but each of them plays a guitar in their own unique fashion, just like their harmonization and vocals. They were doing that complimenting each other on the guitar. So you have three acoustic guitars sometimes, most of the time it's just two and then their vocalizations on top of that you don't need an electric guitar you didn't need you know a heavy backbeat their music was it, it spoke for itself and it's I, it's going to stand the test of time i believe and it sings to the next generation now so um Good. it's kind of there and i have okay so that was my that's four of them so my next one is no no surprise no surprises here because it's my love, but Led Zeppelin. Mm -hmm. So I took two songs and they do. All right. So hear me out on this one. So Gallows Pole electric acoustic. Okay. So Jimmy Page is plugged into an electric acoustic. Um, and, and by the way, that's also a remix song too. Uh, that was yep. an early version. I don't know the date of that and who wrote it. Um, I didn't go that far in my homework to this, this time around, but the other song I'm going to put out there is Hey, Hey, What Can I Do? I love that song. It just, oh, such a great song. And Jimmy Page, it doesn't matter what guitar that man picks up and puts in his hands. <laughs> yep. It's just, it just, it's like yep. puking out rainbows of music. And yep. maybe that's a really poor analogy, but man, it's just <laughs> such a Anyway, that's, that's my five, and I actually have a six, so let me just put it out there. All right. It's a little more modern, but um, Stone Temple Pilots. Okay. And uh, Plush. And I think you know why, if you listen to Plush. Yep. So, so. Um, I think I tried to cover a lot of different backgrounds, different decades, and use of the guitar, and how that acoustic is played by different people and the, the type of music that's being yep. generated by that particular style of guitar. Um, it has its place, it has its place. And there are a lot of people who say, if there's an acoustic, if it's not electric, it's not rock and roll. But I beg to differ. What do you got? All right, well, let me go through my list. And my list is, uh, there are a couple of the same bands, but well, different songs. Time we have that's my list is the one that everyone's <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next week uh no so uh, so the ones i chose uh again uh i i i'm looking at it as um even though the acoustic sound is is uh it doesn't change a whole lot in terms of the actual sound the timbres that they would get uh, but how they utilized their the sound in their songs and and if you were to listen to several songs by the same group there's a similarity of what they you know how this uh acoustic sound was evoked 
Um, and I have a, so my first one is a bit of a, uh, an obscure one, but Give a Little Bit by Supertramp. Roger Hodgson. Hodgson. Uh, if you listen to Supertramp, and I love Supertramp, uh, they... Uh, I'm surprised you pulled that one out because Supertramp really had a very short lifespan. And yeah, I agree. Yeah, I they, they, were, were they, were, they existed through a lot, of the, a lot of the 70s and into the early 80s. And they have, they've had like several that, hits. Say, like as popularity goes. But you if know. you listen to, um, you know, if you were to listen to a lot of their catalog... Um, and I think give a little bit is, 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 uh, very representative of that sound of the 12 string guitar sound and the six string guitar sound that kind of underlies a lot of their music. And, uh, they, they just had a very unique sound and, and the acoustic guitar was essential to that sound. Um, yeah, they had electric, but they, but the acoustic really was underlying a lot of that. All right, so I'm going to go through this a little bit quicker. Uh, next one, uh, Wanted, Dead or Alive by Bon Jovi with, with <laughs> Richie Tambora. I really did. And I'm and, glad you picked that one up because I, had, I struggled with whether to put that on mine or not. And yeah. I'm like, hmm. Maybe Again, I think it's a, it's a very iconic uh, sound. He runs the guitars through a chorus and, uh, and other effects that gives it um, some depth. Um but again, I think if you were to listen to anything by Bon Jovi that had acoustic, it, that sound is uh, pretty consistent. Uh, and I love the song. I mean, I think yeah, it's, well, it's, a, it's a good tune. I have yeah. some nightmares about that one, but uh, that's a whole <laughs> different story. It goes back to college in a, in a uh, dorm situation with a hall mate. So yeah. Okay. Catch me on the other side and I'll tell you the whole story. It's rather comical towards the end of it all, but regardless. Okay. All right, moving on. Next one is The Who with Pete Townsend. But the, uh, what I chose was Pinball Wizard. If you listen to Pinball Wizard, that's that strumming uh, style that he had. Very quick, uh, just really rhythmic and, and uh, um, in your face. I mean, it, 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 it grabs your ear instantly. What I also love about their productions, particularly if you listen to Tommy all the way through, um, and, and other things that they did, but he blends the acoustic with the electric in a really nice way in a lot of songs. So you have the electric sound, but you have that acoustic sound that's uh, particularly the pick sound on the strings underneath it, which gives it some definition that you don't really hear a lot of. Um, no, so that's why I went with Pinball Wizard. What's that? I, I, the pick, I said the production of that, that, particular song you know thinking back how many tracks they would be using when that was made and recorded you know what i mean it yeah. wasn't filled with a lot of stuff it wasn't yeah. filtered it was really raw yeah and, oh, yeah and that was really unique about their sound and you know in the early age you know, early days of, of the who so i agree with that well and and it, uh what's interesting too is with the who um what they did in the studio, particularly in the early days uh, through Tommy, what you heard on the album was very different than what you heard on stage. If you listen to Live at Leeds, their sound on stage was just so in-your-face electric and loud, and it was a very different experience. So if you listen to their albums, particularly their early albums, and you listen, if you listen carefully, you'll hear that those textures of the acoustic with the with the electric but in with pinball wizard and he opens up on the acoustic you know it, yeah, well, I agree. <laughs> it, it's a very iconic sound and iconic sure. moment sure. um all right going on next one is closer to the heart rush alec lifeson mm, nice. and we talk about oh. underrated guitar players and and so on he's an underrated guitar player but i think the sound that they get the, the you know the uh, closer to the heart uh, again defines the acoustic side of what they did and everything they did. Was... I, and I said to you in the past episode that when I listen to music, I'm blown away by the music first, and then I go back and listen to the lyrics. But the lyrics actually on this song pulled me in the first time I ever heard it. And yeah. Like, oh, yeah. No, that is so that's so wicked cool. Oh my god. And, you know, of course, lyrically, guitar speaking, 
It's such a yeah. Good, yep. It's a gorgeous song. Yep. It, it is beautifully laid out. It's. Yep. I love it. Great pick. Nice job. Next one. Roundabout. Yes. Steve Howe. Okay. In the opening. I, was, I actually had it on my list. Listen to this, though. He plays that on an electric guitar. I and don't think so. Awful. I went and looked it up because I had it on my list, and I said, oh, man. Okay. Electric. Whereas I I've read that it was done on an acoustic. Every live thing I looked at, he was playing an electric guitar. Well, maybe live, but in the studio, uh, he was doing it on it. acoustic. That's, a, that's, that's definitely an acoustic like, sound in, in, on know, the studio you know, album. Yeah, so we'll put a question mark to next to that one because I, I think I uh, that's worth, uh, a little more worth looking at. Because I really did. I listened to the, I actually did a lot of listening of that song. I went through and just listened to different versions of it to see. Yep. Because I was, I was always under the impression, especially those harmonic structures, that it was – done on that uh, acoustic but i know i and i've i've seen I, concerts where he has an, uh, an acoustic set up on a stand and he does that opening and then he goes yes, to the electric yes, and that's exactly before. right but i didn't see the acoustic it was always an electric but uh he, no so i do the intro and then they, he steps back i'm and convinced goes, it's done on an acoustic um but we'll put a couple I'm question saying, marks next to that one I, don't know, I think it's a cool thing to go through because I really did have that on my list. And then I was like, I can't really justify that as an acoustic if it's all done on electric. So. Well, no, I know. Uh, but I'm convinced it's done on acoustic. So, and I'm right. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right, moving on. Yeah. Um, nothing else matters. Metallica. James Hetfield. Um, again, for a uh, heavy metal band, the the sounds that he was that he got on that guitar, uh, you know, running it through chorus or whatever effects, uh, really defined that's their sound, and that song for sure. Yeah, I've already speak I've spoken about Metallica, and need I say much more? They're just yep. All right, moment. two more, and uh, we'll go pretty quick here. The, so the next one is uh, "Free Fallen" by Tom Petty. I was. So wanting to put some Tom Petty in there. Yeah. Well, he uses acoustic a lot, and I yeah I had to include him because I think it uh, it helped. It was uh, a defining part of his sound, and and uh, no doubt, and uh, important to have. No, I mean I have no arguments with anything that you have laid out there at all. I mean, and then you solid picks. And then the last one uh, I have is Led Zeppelin with Jimmy Page playing, uh, but I put down Going to California. Yeah. And another great one. And yeah, no. you could put, um, you know, Stairway to Heaven, particularly the opening, but I wanted to be a little different, just like you were. And, no, you know, there's so many important. songs they do with acoustic that, uh, you know, it's just a defining part of their sound that people don't think about. People think about his electric solos and all that, but they right. forget that there's this whole acoustic element that underlies a lot of the songs and and it's important to have that so right here that explains it right there you know when you see i don't open that album up in a long time <laughs> <laughs> we're sticking together ah. you know you, you see this album here is loaded with acoustic so yeah you know it's, it's really great to so, have that I want to so I want to name the next song because it segues into the electric sound. Wait, because this one defines one? both. I think. Hold on, hold on. Back, back up. What, what? Why are you doing another song? I don't understand. No, no. no. So now we've both done our acoustics, right? All right, all right. So you're throwing. So now the next song I wanted to say straddles acoustic and electric. I think there's defining. There's a defining acoustic all right, sound. So and there's a defining electric sound right. uh, that there are in the same song. And that is More Than a Feeling by Boston, Tom Schultz. Think about it. Think about the guitar sound and then think about there is no other, I mean, his sound, his electric sound is his own sound. You listen to Boston, there's no other electric 
guitar player sound like that. You listen to the acoustic guitar, uh, th there really is no comparison. So I thought that was a good one that straddled both. Well, you could uh, you could use your same argument. With, For a lot of them, uh, yeah. With, you said about Zeppelin and Stairway. So. Yep. But I wanted right. to throw that out there. <laughs> all right, all right. So you and I already kind of talked about my list a little bit. So I um, I want to hear yours. I want All right, you I'm going to go through mine real fast because and because what I recommend is as people listen uh, here by the way so as as you hear about these songs if you're not familiar with them go to Spotify or, or Apple Music or wh whatever listen to these songs um, and and you'll get a good sense but all right so here's where I, this is a uh, my Wait, list. how many do you have eight I have nine and I'll go that's why I want to go fast. So the first one I have is Crazy Train, Ozzy Osbourne, Randy Rhodes, guitar player. You can't beat that no. for heavy. I mean, he was Randy Rhodes was such an interesting and and uh, original electric guitar player, heavy metal guitar player. Uh, and it's unfortunate that he died at 24 at such a young age. But uh, and Crazy Train is just one of many songs of that early Ozzy Osbourne period that he played on. Every one has, you know, it's just a great sound. Well, we were, when we introduced this, when intro, okay, let's try that again, huh? When we introduced today, um, this whole video that we were going to do for you, we kind of defined what we were talking about in terms of why the electric guitar is so prolific with these particular songs and, and the groups that we were picking. So, yeah, and I was choosing not just on technique, but also on the sound that they actually it got. Is, that Very individual that sounds. So individual. They've yep. mastered the guitar to make it do something that other people who are just kind of playing the guitar. Yeah. There's lots of guitar players. Yeah. But then there are guitar players who somehow melded with their instrument. Became well, one with it. Yeah. I don't know how else to explain it. It's more, yep. you, you understand what I'm saying, right? Oh, yeah. Well, and as you were talking through your list earlier with me, and I, as I was trying to work on mine, uh, that's what, and some of the ones, and I, I tried not to repeat what you did um, so that, you know. Well, you better not have. I told you not to. <laughs> All right, let me move on. Next one, Sultans of Swing, Dire Straits, Mark oh, Knopfler. Great, what a great band. And a, what a great individualistic sound. He his yeah, sound is <laughs> yeah, it's not copied. Obviously, you know, growing up in the age of MTV and, and watching Money for Nothing for the first yep. time, you're like, what? Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he's that one of the cool. few that doesn't use a pick. He uses his he he picks with his fingers. He doesn't use a plectrum. Um. All right. Next one. Sunday Bloody Sunday. U two. The Edge. Again, it's I mean, and you could choose many different U two songs. But the yeah, edge has his own unique that. sound. Yeah, I, I don't know if I would agree with that one, but I clearly am in, in favor of, of some other U two songs that are definitely out there. Yeah, I, and you, like I said, you could choose any number. I I, I love that song, and and uh, you know, I just I think it's one of the early songs that really starts to show what he was all about. Um, the 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 his approach and his sound um, was really starting to come out then. All right, next. Uh, Jimi Hendrix, but instead of what you chose, I so said so Star Spangled not... Banner. Really? Because, again, <laughs> it was okay. his sound. It was his sound. And I he made it his own. The moment he played that at, at Woodstock, for the people that were left listening... It blew everybody out of their minds. It was because they had never heard a rendition of the national. Well, anthem. and and All if you like listen that. to it, a lot of a lot of his technical and everything was coming out as long as well as his musicality. And if you go on Spotify, you can actually find several different um, live versions of it, not just Woodstock, but he did it uh, many times in concert. And so I, I think that's one of his, one of those tunes that, again, it really showed off what he was about. All right. Yeah. I'm going to move on. National anthem and just, yeah. 
Go ahead. And um, I know you also chose a cream song I did uh, with Eric Clapton, but I chose White Room because it has, again, it's it's his sound. And you got that album. There it is. Uh, yep. Uh, yep. Look at the eye. Can you see the eye? Look into the eye. <laughs> I see. <laughs> anyway. All right. Now that I've been spooked. <laughs> Um, next, welcome to the jungle, Guns N' Roses, Slash. Wow, Slash is so good. Yep. And again, he's got kind of, he's got a unique sound. I mean, he's got a, his own sound. Um, next, and this one's a little bit of an obscure one. Walk Away, James Gang, Joe Walsh. Joe Walsh and his guitar sound, his guitar style, again, very unique but people don't really think about it. I, I think it's, he's underrated when it comes to that. But you listen to it, just, just such an, a unique approach and sound. Yeah, no, I think that's a good pick. Again, I mean, it's just personal preference yep. for us. And what we think, again, embodies what the electric guitar can do and be pushed to do yep. you know, with or without effects in some yep. cases. It's just the person holding on to the instrument, making that guitar do something other than the guitar. Yep. It, it becomes otherworldly almost. And I say that because of my picks coming up. Yep. <laughs> so without ado. Well, I have two more. Let me go through them real quick. Oh, come on. All right. Go ahead. One is Comfortably Numb, Pink Floyd, David Gilmour. And I think if, particularly if you listen to live versions of it, his sound and his just his approach it'll blow you out of the water and then the final one is and i know you've we talked about this queen brian may but i chose we will rock you because the the sound again that he had on that song very original sound um you know and it kind of defined the whole queen electric guitar solo sound i think yeah and that's my list that's a good list, man. I, I don't argue any of your points. Um, Try to top I that. I can. <laughs> so my first one is Metallica 1. Yep. Just, it'll get you fired up, juiced up. You know, to say there's only one Metallica song that defines how a guitar can be played, I, I find that... And I've watched some documentary, put, you know, on, on Metallica and listening to James Tetfield talk about writing and how the band writes their music, the struggles to make it perfect and yep. original, unique every time. They're never, ever satisfied. They drive themselves absolutely crazy yep. trying to put down tracks because they wanted it to be just right. And they were perfectionists. And I think that shows up every single time they put an album out. But one, I think exemplifies it just a hair more than some of the others. But that's again, that's my, my opinion. Mm -hmm. So my next one is Cream. And we talked about this obviously earlier, um, but mine is Crossroads. and. You know, we talked about Eric Clapton's playing style and, you know, I think when he was in Cream, he was playing his very best. Now, I could be, you know, put on the spot later by somebody and say, well, what about this or what about that? But if you think about what I'm saying stylistically, he was just playing these hard grinding blues, not where he, not where he gets his nickname Slowhand, because that's a different pick style than what he was doing on Disraeli Gears. It's really just that hard driving yep. sound yep. that I love Clapton for. And I'm not saying I'm uh, I'm not dogging Clapton, but I'm not a huge fan of his later work just because I felt like he grew into a different place and I wasn't willing to follow it. Yep. <laughs> That's well, just my, my take. Yeah, yeah definitely. So, um, anyway, moving on. You've heard me talk about this band before, and it's 10 years after, and I don't know if I have any 10 years after behind me or not, but uh, 10 years after, I'm going home. Um, the epitome of Alvin Lee and his fame and success all gravitate to Woodstock. It all 
hinges on that song from Helicopter. Um, if you ever listen to the original, it's it's not at all like what he plays. It's barely got. It's just not there. The chord structures are very different. The lyrics are the same, but it is not the same song. Yep. At all. And yep. what he did to that is not only did he put it on the map, but the song is so uplifting. It, it's phenomenal. I never get tired of listening to it. Anyway, my next one is Van Halen Eruption. Yep. Uh, I think it speaks for itself. I need not go into much more than that. We did talk about Eddie's um, hammering style um, that became very evident throughout the rest of Van Halen. Um, it's not that other artists were using that technique. The hammering technique was, you know, it's in Page even uses it in Zeppelin. Um, but it's not something that is in the forefront. It's not something that became a must have. It's, Eddie, when he put out Eruption, everyone was just like. Yep. I remember my you, first reaction. It was pretty much like that. Did you just hear that? Put, put that on again. And you take and lift the needle up and you go back to, to what did yep. he just do? Yep. And you're going, in your, in your air guitar world, you're going, what is he doing? I yep. have no idea what he's doing. Yep. Um, and I can't emphasize the air guitar enough because everybody sat in their rooms with their headphones on trying to jam out and be like Eddie Van Halen. Yep. Let's be quite honest. Okay? Yep. So if you're watching this, give me a thumbs up because I'm right. Um, <laughs> Next one I have on my list, and then, by the way, I couldn't keep to five. I had eight, so my bad. Um, is, I had uh, nine. Queens so. Bohemian. What yeah, was it? Queens Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah. Yeah. We've already caught. We've talked about Brian May, and you know I think he is definitely an underrated guitarist. Um, there are people out there who go, ah, he's not that great. I'm like, yes, he is. Listen to him. Um, he's just got that really cool. Like it's a really cool mellow sound. How you, he makes that Gibson sound very differently than, than actually. Uh, it's not a Gibson. It's a homemade guitar. That's a homemade guitar. He doesn't. He yeah. might have a homemade. All yeah, of his the guitar he plays on is one that he built with his father. Really? Yeah. Wow, cool man. Thank you for educating me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that, that that's what makes it such a unique uh, sound because it's not. It's not a well, back to my original comment about a produced that. guitar, and and then and he Ed runs into the same thing. Things. He would take Sanders and stuff to his guitars and manipulate them. Yeah. And to this day, nobody knows what he actually really did, except for Eddie. Yeah, I mean, you can change pickups on guitars. I mean, that happens all the time with artists. They'll customize a, a guitar. Yep. They'll have three different types of pickups on a guitar and play over the pickup that they choose and switch on and off during a song, even. So, you know, it's not unheard of. Um, to do that but in fact he's got a name for it and i can't think of what he calls it but he, it there, there is a name for it um, but that right. if you look at it it's it's it looks like a gibson but it's not and and the way they put it together it's quite quite uh interesting fabulous see i thought i knew but i didn't there you go yeah all right so uh my next one huh, is Jimi hendrix voodoo child slight return yeah and that would have been my now. that would have been right up to, I mean and I knew you had chosen that one but that was and I would have put that in there too but I think between Voodoo Child and, and Star Spangled Banner somebody who really wants to find out what his playing is all about you listen to those two you things never mimic anything that he's done it's yeah. just impossible I yeah. mean the only person that comes even close to him is Stevie Ray Vaughan and Stevie Ray Vaughan of course does his own thing anyway it makes his, it's his own sound similarities but but stevie ray vaughn had Jimi hendrix to emulate Jimi hendrix had nobody to emulate nobody. yeah you're right uh, no yeah, so he, uh, pioneer and he did everything just yep. blew everybody's side that's exactly why no one ever wanted to follow him like the who didn't want to follow him on you know after he got done on stage and he was like no yeah. <laughs> i'm not following the Montrose, him. Uh, festival yeah yeah exactly so Jimmy, uh, you know, he he set mile markers so high. I don't think oh, anybody yeah. still does. Who who today can be Jimi Hendrix? No one. Yep. No one. Okay, moving on. Um, I have Zeppelin. No quarter. Yeah. That that song. All right. So it happens to be one of my most. 
favorite songs out of all rock and roll. I, I'm going to be quite honest with everybody right now. I love the song. It's just such a beautiful song. It's, it's a saga. It's got so many different elements to it. Uh, John Paul Jones is featured, obviously, on keyboards. Um, and every time there was a live concert, pretty much that was a part of their set list. It, it's just phenomenal. But what was cool about that is that the intro is played, and everyone thinks, oh, there's like a, a flanger on there, a phaser. There is none. It's just a straight up crybaby wah wah. It is just very clean. It's the way Jimmy plays, and he's just using that wah wah. And, um, you know, it's not overdone. That's the thing. You know, when I used to play bass i had a wah wah pedal for the bass and i only ended up playing it like on two songs um when i was doing you know things with uh, solo work it just never quite fit what needed to be done and i understand i think you know very few people do use the wah wah other than freaking Jimi hendrix who used it non-stop but it works for him you know everything yep. he does uh, Jimi hendrix yep. is just out there and not playing himself but um, I just wanted to throw that out there because there's lots of discussions on discussion boards about what and how he did the intro to No Quarter. And that's, it's pretty much unanimous out there that it is just a straight up crybaby wah wah and Jimmy playing, you know, just a killer freaking lick. So, um, and then last but not least, I have to finish the night off with my ACDC back in black. And as I told you already, I think when you think of rock and roll, you think of that introductory first yep. few notes that come right out of Back in Black. And, you know, I can't sing, so I'm not going to try. Yeah. But we all know how it starts off. It's uh, every single party you ever go to, whether you're at a mellow party, it, it'll get played at some point when people get drunk enough or <laughs> whatever. It comes out. It yep. just comes out. It's on everybody's playlist, it seems like. Nobody seems to be upset that it is played. Oh, you can't have rock and roll and all of a sudden, you know, it, here this is. So, yep. um, anyway, I think we did a pretty good job. I really like your picks. Uh, Aces yeah, you had uh, some excellent picks as well. And I uh, I'm always going to have excellent picks. So just know that. <laughs> <laughs> Keep dreaming. Uh, so. so do you want to do the, um, three well, I'm not sure do? what we're planning to do next time. That's my, um, so why don't we just kind of leave it up in the air and we, you know, this one will be a surprise. I like surprises. Yeah. Does that mean you're going to give me a present? I like presents. Maybe. <laughs> just don't send it by the U.S. Postal Service. Yeah, like exactly. Never do. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, next time uh, it'll be a topic that will be determined uh, after we get off – uh, the air on this one. Um, but it'll be interesting nonetheless, as I hopefully all the other ones have been. And so I think that's a good place to end. Mm -hmm. I like playing this game. Do we yeah. have to end? All right. All right. So very good. Um, uh, all right. I'm not really keen on it, but we'll wing it for next one. Next one. All right, guys. So with that being said, everyone, have a good night. Good yep. day, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye. Bye.